A reading from Set Free to Live Free, Breaking Through the Seven Lies Women Tell Themselves by our beloved Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith. In Chapter 17, she writes, Life constantly offers opportunities for you to choose a mental perspective to embrace. Regardless of how intertwined some mental ties have become in your vision of life, the possibility of freedom remains a viable option. Let the floodgates of God's promises sweep through the mental debris of your past. Release your hold on those areas of your life that have become mundane and listless. Open your eyes, open your mind, open your heart, open your hands, and reach for that special place that God has reserved for you. Reach for that place where each day holds the potential to be breathtaking. Reach for that place where you are free to see even your past hurts, disappointments, and failures as a beautifully orchestrated crescendo in the song God is singing over you. The pivotal points of your life are where fracture lines occur and the chains of limitations begin to break. God holds the keys to every type of bondage in your life. Freedom is having the courage to want to be made whole in every area of your life. It's allowing his spirit to have free reign. He has the power to heal as his spirit comes into contact with old mental wounds. He has the ability to liberate you from condemnation when his spirit confronts past failures. He has the capacity to strengthen you in the face of insecurity. Allow him to remove the veil and watch as he changes you into his image. What lies have been holding you back from moving in the direction God has for you? What aspect of your life are you not enjoying to its fullest potential? What relationships have been missed due to fear of disclosure? What activities have you missed out on due to fears and phobias? What peace has been lost because you have become your own worst critic? Which mental tie has you bound. Sometimes the story we tell ourselves is not really true. Sometimes the story others tell about us is not really true. Here on today's Heart Lift with Janelle, we are going to learn how to rewrite our story. So pick up your favorite pen and journal, grab a cup of something delicious, and start your heart-lifting journey towards living a meaningful life. Hello, and welcome to today's Heart Lift with Janelle. And this is a big drum roll because we are welcoming back Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith. Oh my goodness. She (laughs) was with us way back in season five. It was a long season, but she started us in our beautiful journey of how to become stronger emotionally through sacred rest, through resting. Ah, that word, Sandra. (laughs) Welcome back. Thank you. (laughs) Sacred rest. But now we're going to integrate that. We're going to kind of, I love, that's what I've been thinking since I've been reviewing your new release your revised, updated, new release, um, set free to live free. Mm -hmm. Breaking through the seven lies women tell themselves. First and foremost, how did you only pick seven? (laughs) I think you're right. I think there's plenty of them that I could have selected from, but I felt like these are the ones I kept seeing recurring, not just in my own life, but in every one that I sat down with that came into my medical practice. It just seemed like these seven were just consistent and it didn't matter kind of where she was at in her life. 
you know, you, you would think sometimes, oh, well, this person's so successful. Maybe they are, they're not experiencing that one anymore. But that wasn't the case. No, it, it seemed isn't. like it crossed all barriers. All barriers. It it really it absolutely does. I'm I'm going to just read from the the book page two o two o five on. I read in the Kindle. I think it should be the same. Sometimes it's not. But you write this. Um, no one goes through life without ups and downs. No one. Not one soul. Not if you're living in a million dollar house. I'm adding this. Or if you live (laughs) in a hut in Kenya, I've seen them. I've been there. So true. (laughs) I've been there. A tin hut with no electricity. One of the highlights of my life was sitting and talking inside that hut. Mm. That doesn't sell in our world on platform or likes, but it certainly was my heart and where I'd love to end up being more and more. So this book is really speaking to me about lies, I believe. Uh, Pressure, you write, pressure and stress have a way of finding you even when you're sitting at the feet of Jesus. Yeah. They are part of every woman's experience. However, many women have become entombed by their intensity. Such good writing, Sandra. Yet through all the fluctuations of life, there remains a group of women who are determined to take comfort in the promises of God. You call this a sisterhood of overcomers. They have learned to embrace spontaneity and individuality. They know the value of transparency in their lives and its ability to help others. They have made a choice to live their lives free from limiting thoughts and mindsets. They are living examples of what you call the free woman's creed. Should I read that right now? Go right ahead. Or do you have it? Do you have it? I'd love for you to read it. Do you have the free woman's creed can, right I there? I can pull it up quickly. <laughs> okay. I'm going to let you do that. We'll just play some soft music while we're waiting for Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith to find the free woman's creed. This book, Heartlifters Set Free to Live Free, is, is absolutely the book that we're going to pick up. I want you to pick up. This is going to air. We're airing in January 2022, where we're on the threshold of a brand new year. And so we want to be set free. We want to be set free to live free. The title is so strong, so powerful. Originally written in 2011, a decade later, I think it's even more powerful because you've grown, Sandra, right? You've grown. Definitely not the same person I was in 2011. You know, it's funny sometimes when you're writing a book, at least for me, most of my books are written as I'm working through something. You know, yes. so so I have I haven't arrived. You know, as I'm writing the right. book, I definitely haven't arrived in rest. It, it's a journey, so I'm, I'm sharing my journey as I'm on the journey. And you know, this book was the same way. And it, it, you know, one of the things that was really interesting is as I'm going through the, the the book and revising it and kind of updating it along the way, it was it was such confirmation mm-hmm. about almost like seeing ahead. It's like God gave me the ability to, as I initially wrote the book, to Mm -hmm. see ahead to where he wanted to take me. And then going back and reading it to see the progress, Mm -hmm. still not perfection, still not, you know, (laughs) still haven't arrived, but Mm -hmm. to see that there has been growth in all seven Mm -hmm. of these areas. There has been a breaking down and a breaking free. Um, And I am, I'm living in a new place of freedom in God Mm -hmm. um, that I was not experiencing 10 years ago when the book was first written. Yes. Can you so share one small way? I know you do. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to oh, it. Okay. But I couldn't help when I looked in your eyes. I was like, oh, is there one area that you have really broken free in? You know, like, I, let me share why I'm asking that question, because I have a client that I'm currently with, with and um, you know, she has a lot of trauma. Mm-hmm. I deal with mainly trauma informed situations and circumstances. It is my passion. Don't ask me why. I just, I just feel called to help people heal and work through childhood trauma so they can be set free from the lies so they can live free. And so after a, an intensive, I work in intensive. So after an intensive, she was just sitting there and just really super quiet and it had been really hard. She'd done a lot of hard memory reconsolidation work and neuroplasticity work and rewiring. And she set her hand on her heart and she was like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. 
your face started making little, like, I, I'm good. Like, <laughs> and, and she said, I'm good. Right. I said, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> and she's like, I, I don't know what this feeling is. And I said, I don't know. What, what does it feel like? She's like, I don't know. I've never felt it before. And she said, but it's so good. I said, I love that. I know. And it was, I've been doing this work for 12 years. Most trauma work about the last two years, really intensified trauma work. Um, and I said, I think it might be peace. Mm. She said, is that what it feels like? So when you and I talk today, that's what we're talking. Like, these are things we may have never felt before. So true. So true. So and that- go ahead. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the thing when you ask kind of which, like, what have I, what, one of the things that I saw Mm -hmm. just within myself, I would probably say that is very similar to what the client mentioned. It was, I I thought I was free when I first wrote the book. You know, I, I, I really did. You know, I I wouldn't have written the book about it if I didn't think I was, but what I learned is that there's measures of freedom. And I didn't know that before. Mm -hmm. I thought you're either free or you're not. And, yes, you know, and yes, I do recognize in the scriptures that the sun sets us free, but we there's free measures indeed. of freedom. As same as there's measures of faith. Yes, and ma'am. I had a measure of freedom, but I, but now looking back, the, for example, in the area of comparisons, like I cheered on my sisters, like I wanted people to succeed, mm-hmm. but at the time there was still a part of me that would say things like, well, God, why is she getting to do X, Y, Z? Oh, and thank you why for saying that. Why is she getting to do that? <laughs> that feels <laughs> so much better. Get, that's not freedom. That's no, a ma'am, it is house. prison. You know, and although I cheered on my sisters, I still had that in my heart. Yes. And so, you know, I, you know, I got to a point where really I felt like God starts saying to me, if you really want her to succeed, tell her what you know, that'll help her get there. Even if she gets Ooh. there before you. And Ooh, I thought, say it again, I don't, say it again, <laughs> say it. <laughs> If you really want her to, to succeed, tell her what you know that will help her to get there. Even if she gets there before you, even wow. if she gets the blessing you're praying for before you do. Now, let me tell you, that was a wake up call That's because huge. I'm like, God, that, that doesn't feel good. I don't <laughs> It's like, and that's what that's, and that's how, you know, that's still a lie that you believe that's, that's still, right. a, that's still a mental tie that if she gets there, that it's in some way takes something from you. Mm -hmm. limits what I can do, robs you of something. And as long Mm -hmm. as you believe that you're not in position heart-wise to move further. And so those were some of the, what I call the hard moments, the hard healing moments with God, where you, he shows, he shines a light, his light back at you. So you can still see the places that are dark. And it's not from a place of condemnation. It's uh, from a place of conviction. It's like, this can change. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like deep this can change. I don't want you to stay like that Mm-mm. because it doesn't, it's not a reflection of him <laughs> in any way. No, you no, know? it's and not so, true. It's not the true no. light. It's like, I keep really going through John one and just, he is the true light, you know, and here we are at the threshold of a year and man, we're still in the, the COVID thing. We're still you know, and so, so many of us have been in the shadows of like, what's going on, but here we are to usher in and really with your help experience the true light that you just helped us. And by saying that he shines his light Mm -hmm. on us so that we can reflect that light. Oh my gosh, that's enough in and of itself. We're done. I'm done. <laughs> you know, it's just so powerful to think that, you know, I, I know that my heart lifters really do want to be authentic mm-hmm. and we want to really be a sisterhood of overcomers. And so let's, let's understand that free woman's creed. And, and so I said that before we under, we hear you list, read the free woman's creed. Mm-hmm. Because there are so many of us who may still need a bigger measure of that freedom that you're talking Absolutely. about. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Just as God takes us from grace to grace, mm-hmm. glory to glory, I believe it's from freedom to freedom. I do. So that you're, you're consistently growing in the level of freedom that you experience. Yeah, I think so. Go ahead. I'm so ready for you to share this. 
So there's there's seven statements, and these seven statements are the statements of a free woman. Mm -hmm. Um, Number one, I am perfectly imperfect. Number two, I'm too unique for comparisons. Number three, my body, my temple, God's choice. Number four, my balanced life requires addition and subtraction. Number five, spontaneity is God's opportunity to surprise me. Number six, my transparency opens the doors for soul connections. And number seven, my only limitations are the top the ties I like allow to bind me. Ooh, the only limitation are the ties that I allow to bind, to bind me. me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which leads again to the foundational truth that once we begin becoming aware. So all I can hope in the work that I do is that, and I know you feel this way, is to increase the awareness that someone Mm -hmm. has about their own spirit, soul, and body. You were a medical doctor. You are a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, I said to you before we came on and and when we were praying, the Holy Spirit really did. You have sat with women in the trenches, Sandra as their physical doctor, right? As their Mm -hmm. medical doctor, but far beyond you have caught the tears of women suffering with all kinds of cancer with maladies. I know what my couple doctors who are truly the empathic doctor who gets to know me on a personal level and cries Mm -hmm. with me. You know, I know what that space is like, and I know that you are all things to all people in that moment, you know, mm-hmm. and your presence there is their greatest gift. And I'm so grateful. And so you speak out of the trenches, you know, and that's what makes me really hear what you say and believe what you say. And it makes me want to do better and be better and offer and reflect the light of God. So I want to, I want to thank you here, you know, for what you now bring from the trenches and it's just, it's been mined, you know, it's like you mined for diamonds, just like you talk about, we'll get to that in a little while, the diamond society, you actually, you know, were a a gold miner, you were a diamond miner uh, and you've been, (laughs) I, 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 I feel that sometimes, you know, and I thank you for that because, mm-hmm. um, because you're right, you know, the, the healthcare is really interesting. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's transitioned a lot from when I first started medicine, but, you know, at sure. the very core of healthcare, sure. you're not just treating a body. I mean, there's so much more people bring into that office space mm-hmm. uh, from the fight they had with their husband to their child that's unsaved mm-hmm. and on drugs. You know, there's so much that they bring into that moment. Yeah. And, you know, I started, I, you know, I opened up the book talking about one of my patients who I just, mm-hmm. I knew what she needed. It wasn't for me just to write her another you know, sleeping pill or anxiety yes. pill or whatever it was she was asking for at the moment that yeah. there was something so much deeper that was needed. And, you mm-hmm. know, it's really interesting because one of the very first things I started to do after that, that experience with that particular mm-hmm. patient, I started putting little, um, as a, myself and my nurse, we would put daily bread you know, the little book, oh, that, yes. the book inside of, inside of the off, inside of the waiting, oh. the, the, not the waiting room, but like exam the, room, exam room. Yes. Yeah. Like right where they would be. I sitting, have done some Jesus office. time in exam rooms. So. Well. That is where I have met Jesus. <laughs> and that's what, that's what we were praying. We would, we yes. would literally pray and anoint the rooms in yeah. the morning. Oh that my the presence gosh. of God would fill the space so oh. that even before I entered the room that they would, they would be greeted by the great physician before the lesser oh. physician came into the room. Now you're and so it was weak. so funny how many times, well, not funny, but just, no. you know, so all inspiring. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you, you don't even know what to think to walk into some of these rooms and people have the daily bread open and they're just weeping. They're just weeping under the presence. And they're like, I don't know why I'm crying. Oh and my I'm, God, I'm praying like, and I took the room. Nurse, my nurse has, uh, sh- her Her name is LaShonda. She has such the sweetest oh. presence. She's the kind of person that if we know someone has a death in their family, she call- I don't have to tell her to call. It is wow. in her nature to call. Wow. She, does- she was doing this long before we ever got to this point where I'm like, let's pray over the room. <laughs> long before wow. that, she was already doing this. Stuff. She was already doing it. Yeah. I mean, it's just in her nature. She's a PK. She's a preacher's kid. And it's oh, just, wow. in- it's just who she is. You were is. yoked, yoked. Yeah. Yes, we mm-hmm. really were. Um, mm-hmm. And it was just so, so awesome to see that, 
to see just how God would move before I even get into the room. I would hear mm-hmm. her in the mm-hmm. praying for patients sometimes because I would leave the room. Sometimes I would, I would, as I say, drop a Holy Spirit bomb. <laughs> I would just, you know, somebody would say something and I would just, I, I would say, can I pray for you? Because everybody who came in wasn't Christian. Dr. And say, Sandra. And I, we would sit down and we pray. Wow. And I, and in the moment I would feel like a, I would have a word, but I wouldn't say, I feel like God said, mm-hmm. you know, it wasn't like mm-hmm. that. It's just like, God, I would speak it in the reverse. Like if I yes. felt like I was saying, they really don't feel like they have anybody, like nobody loves right. them. I would speak the love of God over them. And so I would leave the room and they're sitting there kind of like, thank you in shock. And I leave the yes. room and she would walk in and they'd burst out in tears. And so then I see, I'd hear her in there ministering to them. Yes. We weren't comfortable doing that. It was the altar care. So so there needed, exactly. They needed (laughs) someone to come come in after that, after they'd had a moment to process the moment. You need like a room. Now we need to go over to this room. (laughs) (laughs) Take her to, let her process. But that's that's what our, that's what my office space became. Well, I would love to have had the office next to you. (laughs) And, and, And just let's now go over and see Sister Janelle. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> what a powerful it combo. such an wow. interesting thing to watch, but you're right. It, is, it was such a unique opportunity mm-hmm. from which to write from. Yes, ma'am. From the trenches. And I appreciate mm-hmm. it. And you can tell, you can tell, and your heart shows through in every line. So I now am at a crossroads because there is so much I want to talk to you always about, um, but I've got to watch the time and value <laughs> you. The Free Romans Creed. Okay. You can get that in San- Sandra's book. Mm-hmm. Um, why do I always, it's Sandra, right? It is. Uh-huh. It is right. And I'm always in my it head because my best friend's name is Sandra. So I'm like, ah, um, <laughs> Sandra set free to live free. So I want you to definitely heart lifters lean into that free woman's creed and paste it on your refrigerator, your mirror everywhere. That is the goal. Mm-hmm. But before we reach that goal, right? So that we can gain measure of freedom today. That's new. Let's talk about the seven lies. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's make sure everyone knows what those seven lies are. And, um, you can lean in here and listen between the lines. Cause you know, that's what active listeners do. And that's, what we're going to do to, to Dr. Sonder. We're going to be listening to her we're in her exam room. And she is going to offer us and tell us about these seven lies. And maybe one of them You'll feel the resonation inside, which I usually do. I feel a resonating, like a little quiver or, ooh, oh, oh. I felt it when you said comparison already. I felt it. You know, we are in an industry as authors and, and speakers and all the things that we do that is highly competitive. It just is. Mm-hmm. And as much as we want to say it's not, it is. And so um, we have to have more ego strength to be able to share our knowledge and, and encourage others. So thank you for sharing your authentic story there. Okay. Give us the seven lies. Do you want to state them first? And then we'll just swiftly move through each one of them. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll say the general category. um, Cause I think, and then we're going to go into the specifics. So the seven categories are perfection, envy, image, balance, control, emotions, and limits. Yes. And then there's a statement for, for each of those categories. That's yes. same as the free woman's creed has like a one-liner statement. There's mm-hmm. a one sentence statement for each yeah. of those. Do you want to and, read that? Um, do you have it right there? I do. Like an intention, I guess, or. Yeah. It's just to kind of, uh, to kind of see, is this something that you believe uh, for yourself? Yeah. Is this something that, is this a belief system that you've been working off of? And you did that in sacred rest as well, which I, I appreciate your methodology. Like you're very left-brained and I love that. <laughs> you're a left brain artist, but you're a doctor. I, am. I mean, how do you get through med school and not have a left brain that's dominant? I don't know. I'm sure there are right brain, but yeah. So I, yeah, I love I really, it. It's um, good. My mindset's always on how do I help somebody self-diagnose? I think is what my, my yes. thought process has always been. Yeah. And in my community um, with so much trauma informed, sorry, I was just going to say in my community with so much trauma informed, which I'm sure you, you know, the body keeps the score, Dr. Bessel van der Kolk, Mm -hmm. all of that. So many underlying health issues are from, you know, unresolved trauma. We know that now we absolutely know that. And so how do you, when you go in an office, like I want a sleeping pill. I know I had that experience in, in, Mm -hmm. um, 1987. Yes. 
where a doctor sat me down for two hours and didn't do one thing, but say, tell me about your family. And I cried for two hours and I called it black Tuesday. And he never even took my blood pressure. I mean, he just said your problem, let me help you, you know, Mm -hmm. this is it. And, you know, he gave me a prescription for self-care and health Mm -hmm. and, and I love that. (laughs) Yeah. Dr. Grolke. I think he was an angel. I don't know, but I never (laughs) will forget that day. It changed my life. And we want to do that today. So I said that because we want to, um, when we have a lot of unresolved trauma, so this is something you might want to listen if you're, you know, listeners that, you know, if you get your window of tolerance, we call it, or if you get overwhelmed really easily and you can't manage a lot of processing, Mm -hmm. you know, um, like clear thinking and clear thoughts are very helpful. And that's why I like to use your work in my practice Sandra, because most people are so overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. So less is more. Does that make always, sense? Always, always less. And that's scriptural. I yes. can't quote this, this, where yeah. it is in the Bible, but mm-hmm. there is a scripture that specifically mm-hmm. actually says that. And I believe that to be true. Less is more, but yeah. that's not our culture. That's not what our culture teaches. Oh, so, not at all. <laughs> so you have to kind of unwire some of the cultural teaching for people to really to really get that. And we're going to do that. And you're going to help us because you are so good. All right. So give us the one-liner. So the one-liner, um, so it's perfection is the goal. I would be happy to, if I had her life, if I do this, I can look like that. Life is an all or none activity. Being in control is better than spontaneity. Emotional imbalance is only for crazy women. And everything comes with conditions. I think you got to read it again. Take it a little slower. Mm-hmm. If you don't mind me giving some direction. Yeah. Because okay. I think this is almost a meditative moment where I want to give everyone, like, take a little break between each one mm-hmm. and process and, if this is, uh huh. Is this resonating inside of me? Okay. I'm going to write it down. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is so good. Perfection is the goal. I would be happy too if I had her life. Mm. If I do this, I can look like that. Life is an all or none activity. Being in control is better than spontaneity. Emotional imbalance is only for crazy women. Mm. Everything comes with conditions. Mm, so good. Oh my gosh. I don't know which one to choose. <laughs> well, I know the one that for myself, the one that the reason it was the last one I wrote about and probably cried through the whole time writing it was everything comes with conditions. That's where it hit me so hard. So I'm so thankful it's yours too. <laughs> so please, you can just uh, help me. <laughs> That was the one that, you know, I, I, I knew I wanted to talk about limits, but I, I also knew that that was, that was the real tie that had me bound for so long Uh. because, you know, the thing is when, when we start thinking that everything comes with conditions, especially when, when we look at our world, you know, I grew up kind of in a situation where I felt like if I got A's, you know, then everybody loved me. Or if I did well at this and everything was great, you start applying some of that stuff to God. Yes. He doesn't function like that. Not at all. And the problem is when you start applying that limiting mindset to God, it doesn't limit God. It actually just limits you. Mm -hmm. You know, God still has the capacity and the ability to do all of those things. But it's almost like you've now offered him this tiny little cup and you're saying, I want your blessings, but this is this, this, these are the limits with which I can hold it. And I think that's where I stayed for a long time. It's like, God, I I want you to do this and that and this and that in my life, but I'm offering him this tiny little cup and saying, but I think this is all I have room to hold. And so even if he fills that up to overflowing, it still feels like too little because I have the ability to hold so much more, but my limiting belief is only bringing this much space for him to fill. And so I I had to start getting this thought process Mm. of God help. I I really started to pray the prayer. 
And this has just been, this has been after the book, <laughs> you know, um, right. I started oh, yes. to pray the prayer, God help me to expand my capacity, almost like the prayer of Jabez, help me yes. to expand my capacity yes. to even desire, mm-hmm. help me to dream bigger dreams, not because I mm-hmm. want more stuff. Mm-hmm. I want the fullness of what you can pour into my life, whatever Ooh. that looks like. Yes. You know, we all have different capacities. So, um, you know, but all of most of us, the, what we're asking for isn't even a tenth of the capacity no. God, <laughs> that we are capable of holding. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the thing is, I think we just have to eventually get to that place where we recognize that God does want to pour out lavishly in our lives, whatever that looks like for us personally, mm-hmm. so that we are kind of operating from a place of overflow. And it's not yes. overflowing from a tiny cup because our, our beliefs have been so small. It's over from yeah. flowing from a place of abundance where we we truly don't have issues with perfection or comparisons or any of these other things, mm-hmm. because all of those things get overwhelmed when we open up ourselves enough for him to fill us completely. (laughs) That was my revelation. Oh my gosh. That was, that was was my revelation. Sometimes people ask, how do you give so freely? Uh, Yeah. How can you, you're an author, you're a speaker. How do you, why do you go on? And you do. Why, yes. yeah, why do you go on and say, hey, guys, there's a speaking opportunity. Hey, do this or do that. Yeah. yeah. Why don't I'm you? applying for it. You apply too. I'll, I'll cheer you on if you get it. You cheer me on if I get it. Yeah, You're that's like, why not are you normal. Doing that? Nobody that's does not that. normal. <laughs> so it's, not normal. It's, it's definitely <laughs> spirit led because it's yes. not something I would have done 10 years ago. Yes. And that's yeah. the reason why, because whenever I think about that, I'm like, God, I want to have a cup so huge mm. that I can, I can put out 20 opportunities and not feel like I'm missing anything. I yes. want I, I, my constant prayer, keep expanding my capacity yes. because I want to be able to, I did my vision board for this year, uh, for 2022. I do one every year. Already? And my words, God had. Me oh, can we have a picture? Here, can you give it? Can I share it? I can't share a picture. Okay. All right. We'll the, share the it. The word in the show God notes. had me put on there was, um, po- was, uh, poor <gasps> rest and, and flow. Poor, P-O-U-R. P-O-U-R, poor. I want to be, I, and I have a picture, some, me, uh, picture of a, like a cup being poured into. I want to pour into the lives of others. Oh I want to stay in a place of rest. And then as a picture of a river, I want to flow in the oh. river of spirit. I, I want to stay in those three places throughout the 2022. That's, oh. that is my goal for 2022. And Where then I is the class like, and when can we sign up for uh, a vision board <laughs> there's class? There's no class. <laughs> there's not that I know of. Oh, there's maybe I'll do it. I have a heart board else. in my book. It's so. like, that's, that, that is my heart. I, I want to, I want to stay so, mm-hmm. I want to stay so connected with Holy Spirit in this next year mm-hmm. that I'm, a, I'm, I'm just a, a vessel that he's like consistently mm-hmm. pouring from and mm-hmm. I'm not striving. I'm staying in a place of rest. I don't want to strive yes. to pour. I yes. want to pour from a place of rest as I flow in the spirit. That's the, that's actually the order of the words. Pour, pour. Rest, flow. Yes. Yes. Well, you have written the, the, oh, the book, Sacred Rest. So hello. Yes. <laughs> you are our steward of that. And so that is a pivotal point of what you bring to us and exhibit to us. So yeah, I can see that. Okay. I'm going to go back to a thought that you, that I hope I haven't forgotten. <laughs> if you're my client, okay. you know, <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm like, I'll forget it. I have to say it right now. So just hold on. Um, why would you say that you only brought a small cup, like capacity is one of our major words in the stronger everyday community. It's one of my favorite words because it means, Mm -hmm. you know, the measure to hold the greatest quantity ever, you know, and Mm -hmm. none of us, you know, we've been talking about that word measure, right? None of us have maximized our capacity art to hold something. That's what it is. It's the maximum ability of holding something. And none of us have maxed out. Right. Right. So when you said that one statement to me that about, I only brought in your, your nonverbal was so powerful. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see that you know, I only brought a small, even your shoulders went up, you know, I only Mm -hmm. brought a small in your mouth cup. Do you now know why you only brought a small cup? Yes, I, I operated out of really a, a limited poverty mindset. 
I, and that was part of the reason for the comparisons. I felt like if God blessed you, then that took something from me. I yes. felt like if you were getting more than I was getting less. And so that, and as you mentioned, that it, it constricts, it, it actually does. constricts us down and it, it constricts your down voice. our spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, it constricts down our actions. It constricts down our ability to love others. <laughs> you know, it's a constricting, even a hug is expanded. Yeah. You know, uh, that's a constricted um, emotion. And it mm-hmm. it functions much deeper than just, you know, um, just the emotions of it. It goes into every aspect of our life. Yes. And so that's, you know, it, it took a long time to recognize that because mm-hmm. I didn't think I was functioning from that place. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I really look at your like life. Was, you were a doctor. Was yeah, that- I felt like I give all day. I, you know, <laughs> I felt but, like I'm a, I'm a chronic giver. I give all day, yes. God. But it's like you give, but you're giving from this place of, of feeling like you don't have enough. Yes. You're not giving from a place of actually feeling like you have abundance. But doesn't it link to the fact that you think you're not enough somehow? It does. It or does. that I'm it not does. worthy of that. I'm not. That was a, yes. I, all of the, all of the above. <laughs> because, you know, what I, what I ended up having to really start believing, not just seeing and hearing, yes. but believing was that I'm a, I'm a reflection of the image of God. Right. Yes. And if I'm a reflection of the unlimited, that makes me unlimited. And I and I never believed that. I always felt like, well, God's unlimited. And so, but I'm just this little bitty, kind of like the grasshopper mentality. I'm just this little bitty thing. And I still fight with that. I still have to fight that that mental tie off on a regular basis. Because it is, it's it's measures of growth with it. I recently had an event where Bill Johnson was speaking at and Ed Savoso wow. was speaking at and I and, and I'm giving a testimony. I'm not speaking like I'm not a keynote, but I was asked to give my You're testimony. Speaking. That, yeah. Well, and I, I, get doing it. It right I get you. I know in the world of speaking. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. But but I but when I was sharing it with people, I was like, you know, I feel like this small fish in this big ocean of like spiritual giants. And someone called me on it. They're like, Good. they're like, stop that. Good girl. But, you know, and that's the thing, you know, I still have to fight that off when yes. I'm around people who have so much further along than me, mm-hmm. I still kind of want to shrink in. Yes. And, you know, the very strange thing, I was like, oh, you know, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to stand on that stage? I still had to battle all of that. The plain rock there. Well, and you were letting the, us know, you were saying, pray for me. You yeah, didn't give us like, that I'm detail. I'm really feeling but... small here. Yes. And I know that's not God's will for me to contract down. Mm-hmm. And it was so, it's it's so like God, you know, it's like the second I got on the stage and I'm looking out there, it's like all of that left my brain. All of it oh. left my brain. I was animated. I filled yes. the stage up. I shared God. I got a, like a standing. <laughs> oh, I love God so much. And I'm like, I oh my him. God. And Ed, Ed Savosa was there as I walked off the <laughs> stage and he like gave me this big hug. He goes, because you're just a little ball of dynamite. It I was sure awesome. am. <laughs> <laughs> he says it in know his, it. <laughs> accent. It was so it was so amazing. It was so amazing. Oh, affirming. Um, because that's the thing. I I, I didn't when it, the words he said really resonated yeah. because that's how I felt. I felt so little. And it's like God went little boom. It's like, oh. it's like let's blow the capacity let's off do. of what you thought. You thought you were so little. I I want you to see that the dudamous power of me, when it comes inside of you, like breaks off the shell that you're trying to stay within. And so, you know, he keeps doing small things like that with me where Mm -hmm. it's a moment where I'm thinking, you know, God, just, just let me, just let me keep my words together, figure out what I'm going to (laughs) say. I had a little, I'd written out what I was going to say. When I got up to go up there, I didn't take my notes with me. Oh. I, I just walked up on the stage oh because my. I felt with the spirit, that's what I was supposed to do. I wasn't supposed to take anything else. And so, you yeah. know, I love, I love how God so gently leads us if yes. we're willing to follow and we're willing to follow when we don't have control. You and know, take and that's that one step. of the lies. It is. You know, Go ahead. Talk to the control. Is yep. Control is better than spontaneity. And it's not. Mm-hmm. God doesn't have the ability to kind of do the supernatural if yes. we want to contain all the control. Um, right. and, you know, and that's that's what I'm having to, to consistently learn to mm. release control. I'm a control freak. So I had the full testimony written out, you know, not like I didn't live the life, right? So I got the full testimony written out. And not you know, like you haven't done a TED talk. 
front where you had to have no notes. I know, like I've never been on a stage or that, you know, or any of that. But I'm gonna, I have this whole thing written out because I'm so scared I'm gonna mess it up because the control side of perfection me wants to make it perfect, right? And I get up there and it's in, perfectly imperfect. I'm like going through the story, perfectly imperfect. Love it. it opened up so, transparency, sharing where my, my weakness from the stage, opened up an opportunity for soul connection. It's like yeah, I, it's, I, it, I, you went through all the seven lives. I get the moment to live out the book in real life you when did. I do it God's way. Yes. You absolutely went through I'm the perfection. I'm the same again. Okay. I'm going to let you read them again. Do you still have them there? The one line, yes, and we're going to take another pause. You are being so authentic. I'm so grateful. Um, we're going to read them one last time because I, I, I could just Sandra. I could talk. Please come back again. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I, if you like the way the book's actually set up, I talk about the lie, and then the next chapter talks about the the free woman's creed statement. Okay, so let's that do that. It, Want to do that? So that it breaks them up. Um, yeah. So maybe hearing both, so you can see yes. kind of the transition that happens. Love it. So the lie is perfection is the goal. The truth is I am perfectly imperfect. Mm. Mm. The lie is I would be happy too if I had her life. Mm. The truth is I'm too unique for comparison. The lie is, if I do this, I can look like that. The truth is, my body, my temple, God's choice. The lie is, life is an all or none activity. Mm -hmm. The truth is, my balanced life requires addition and subtraction. The lie is being in control is better than spontaneity. The truth is spontaneity is God's opportunity to surprise me. Mm. The lie is emotional imbalance is only for crazy women. The truth is my transparency opens the door for soul connections. The lie is everything comes with conditions. The truth is my only limitations are the ties I allow to bind me. I'm speechless. I need to go spend time with God. And I have no doubt in my mind, Heartlifters, that you... This was sobering and I wanted it to be, and it was honest, and I'm so grateful. I want to dig so deeply into the addition and subtraction. I want to dig so deeply into if I just look like this, then, or if I just do this, I'll look like that. There's so many. So I would, I'm, you have an open invitation always um, where we can dive deeper, even into each of the seven lies. And I'll mm-hmm. do that, of course. Um in my, I'll weave it in my podcast for sure, but I would love to have you back. There is an eight week group study guide in the back that I love. Um, it's methodical, which I love, and it is, has a few questions. It's not overwhelming. And I think that's what I'm seeing more and more um, in the world that we're living in, that we need more of that. Um, as we're closing, uh, I, I think I just may have lied. No, that I was going to let you go. <laughs> but but um, I want to just read this one little quote. And it okay. is based on Malachi 317. And you write about this in the, at the end of the book. Um, mm-hmm. The quote, the, the scripture is, and they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And you're right. All God's jewels must be unearthed. There is a time of deep concealment as those issues that have threatened to bury you become the agents to develop greater clarity. Then there is a time of excavation 
ugh, as God digs deep to find you, to find you at the core of your personal needs. As Dr. Kurt Thompson always says, Jesus is coming to find you. Mm -hmm. And we want to be people who come to find people. We want to be those people. Excavators. Finally comes the time of exposure. Ugh. When God showcases the adornments that have captured his heart. Through these times of intense pressure, heat, and upheaval, God reveals his diamonds. Every facet of your life, Heartlifter, has potential testimony. Just like Sandra, every facet of your life. Every point of transparency is a place for you to reflect the light of his love that you shared. He reflects his light on us. Mm -hmm. He shares his light. He gives it so that we can share his light. Even your imperfections are a part of your unique beauty. Every intricate detail is cut into your life for a specific purpose. And I emphatically, emphatically bring to light the word cut. Just like the diamond I'm looking at in my hand. Every variation in the colors of your journey is placed there by design. You are one of God's treasured jewels and a potential member of the Diamond Society. <laughs> I just love that. Anything in closing? Yes. You know what? I, I added that specific word, a potential member. Um, mm. I, I added that purpose. word on purpose because I, I feel like so many times we, we, we either, we resist, we resist the, mm -hmm. the pressure that our life's going through yep. that season or what I'm finding more so now as I'm working with, you know, authors and speakers, we resist the unveiling. Oh, we spend oh so much time in the dirt. Oh, we no. Feel like we're unworthy. And so that's why I put the word potential there. And so my prayer for anybody watching is knowing that the dirt that you feel like you've been rolling around in, living in the, the pressure, the, the trials, the cutting, all of those things that you feel like make you unworthy. They're actually what's developed you to be worthy. They're actually what's actually positioned you. You 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 graduated. You've come through the process now to be unveiled. Don't resist the unveiling. Don't resist the exposure. Don't shrink back from that because that's why you went through all of that. That was the purpose. That was the goal. So now that you're being exposed, know that you're ready. You may not feel prepared. You may not feel ready, mm -hmm. but you you are. God is the God is everything that felt like it makes you unworthy is mm -hmm. usually what's making you worthy for what he's calling you into. And that is what you shared when you were walking up to the stage and sharing the stage with bigger presences in a sense mm -hmm. um, that if I'm hearing you right, that that journey, because you just hit me flat in the face <laughs> in a loving way loving hit was the wrong word. What's the right? It really did gobsmack me. <laughs> I'll be I finished. understand. Yes. I've had this like, moment. ouch. <laughs> um, Lovingly like, <laughs> yeah, a little love tap there. Like don't resist the unveiling was a prophetic footing word. And that's hard though. Right? Like I always say to my clients and myself, freedom is hard when you've been enslaved. Yes, absolutely. It's almost like a if you're you've had an amputation, you have phantom shadow pain I've heard. Mm -hmm. Um happy is hard when you have never known happy. Peace is hard like the woman we spoke about. Mm -hmm. She's like this is strange. And that it's hard. Is, is that a fair statement? I just want to make sure is, that I'm hearing you. It's, it's new. new territory. Okay. It's new territory. You know, when, when they entered the promised land, mm -hmm. it was the promised land, but it was still new. Mm -hmm. So they still had to learn the manna wasn't falling. You know? right. <laughs> they had to learn new. And yes. so, although it's the promise, it still feels, it feels uncomfortable because yes. it's new. You know, mm -hmm. that's the thing, you know, even, even blessings 
can feel can feel like pressure, you know, <laughs> because yes. of the newness of it. So yes. you know, that's the thing we have to kind of stay in a place where we understand that having control is not going to help us because that doesn't, that doesn't flow with God. Flowing is no control. That's you know, right. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mm-hmm. surrender process. It's a surrender, right? right. It Complete is surrender where you just go where you're led and you yes. go there with the level of confidence and peace, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean it's not going to feel weird. You know, think about the first, if you're a swimmer, think about the first time you actually tried to float on your back. You I know, still can't or, float. <laughs> so yeah, so and that's that's why I mentioned that because so many people, it's still like you, a little part of you feels like this doesn't feel safe. You know, this feels no. a little bit like I'm gonna drown. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's a part of you, you that let go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. You know, life in the spirit is a has a lot like swimming. Yes, there's, there's a level of complete loss of control. Yes. that's required to be propelled by His energy and not your own. Yes. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. So to be set free to live free is a uh, requiring growth mindset, mm-hmm. moving from a fixed mindset and it's moving from measure to measure. I almost, Absolutely. I always like the scripture too, little by little precept upon precept. And that's a huge takeaway at the beginning of this new year. Okay, guys, Dr. Sandra already has her vision board. Hello. Um, and so we're in January and hopefully you do too. So I'm going to kind of initiate maybe uh, helping that along. Uh, I That has inspired me so much that you already have yours done. So you gave me another kick in the pants and I love it. <laughs> Thank you for admonishing me forward in, in a beautiful, graceful way. There's no shame. There's never any shame in this no. community. So thank you. I am going to close now, even though I really don't want to, but thank you so much. We all want to uh, be part of the Diamond Society in January of 2022. And, and we want to uh, commit to becoming stronger every day through believing the truth and not the lies. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Oh, Heartlifters, what a privilege to have been on this unhurried holiday journey with you. I wouldn't want to be on this journey with anyone else but you. One day when all of the restrictions of this COVID pandemic are lifted, we're going to have, mark my words, our very first Heartlift International Conference, and we will all gather and we will just stand united in our strength and in our purpose and in our passion. I just want to thank again all of the guests that we have had on this season and thank you, Dr. Sandra, for leading us here to the threshold of a new year where we are going to lay down our satchel of lies and we're going to begin pronouncing the beautiful free woman's creed that you offer to us in your beautiful book, Set Free to Live Free. Here it is one more time. I am perfectly imperfect. I am too unique for comparisons. My body, my temple, God's choice. My balanced life requires addition and subtraction. Spontaneity is God's opportunity to surprise me. My transparency opens the door for soul connections. My only limitations are the ties I allow to bind me. The only limitations on my life are the ties I allow to bind me. Heartlifter, if you need some help in untying these binds, you know where to find me. And let me tell you where to find Dr. Sandra. Go to her site. It is jam-packed with resources and help and, and a quiz and so many things that are going to embolden you and equip you and empower you to live in your God-breathed truth in 2022. Visit Dr. Dalton Smith. Dot com. That's Dr. D-R D-A-L-T-O-N-S-M-I-T-H.com. It'll also be in the show notes. Move forward, 
become a part of this diamond society that she shared with us and move into the new year. But until then, I want you to remember, please remember, as you are standing on the threshold of this invitation to God's freedom, you, Heartlifter, are clothed in strength and dignity with nothing, no thing to fear. You can smile. You can laugh at your future. Thanks for listening today. It was great having you here. For even more great content and resources, please join the Stronger Every Day online community at JanelleRairdon.com. Always remember, you, my friend, have value, worth, and dignity.